a variety of policy choices. This one has been simplified down to four choices to let people walk through, again, so they can experience the distinctions among these. So here's the first one. What if we slowed emissions growth by 50%? So think about that. What does that really mean? So here's a screen. People can start to experiment, take policy choice one. What does slowing emissions growth mean? You know, it means that we're going to cut the rate at which it's growing by a half over the next um, 90 years or so. And then you can ask people to make a prediction. Well, if we cut this by half, which one of these lines do you think we're going to get in terms of a prediction for the future? So, you know, I'm going to predict here that, uh, you know, it's going to be line number four, which is this line here. So it's going to go up, but then eventually come down. That would be my prediction. So I'll go back here, and now I can test my prediction. Hope, hope you all are, are guessing, making your prediction. Did you think uh, my prediction was accurate, or do you have a different prediction? All right, so here's a, uh, a graph that shows the actual, which is the black line, compared with the target, which is the red line. And we set the target in this current lab to 400. Many people are setting the target even lower at 350. We're taking a slightly uh, more conservative approach at 400 here. And the prediction is also showing here. So here's an opportunity to start teaching people the relationships of bathtub dynamics and also to get them to better mentally simulate those, uh, those distinctions. So it turns out that the gap between emissions and removals uh, topic can be discussed here. And you can see, again, that if you slow the rate of growth, it doesn't grow quite so large, but if there's still a gap, which there would be since it's not being less than the annual removals. As you can see here, there's a positive um, number here, and it's in red, so it's a big problem. Then the uh, also you can see that the emissions here is greater than removals all the way out. Therefore, it makes sense that the bat would continue to rise. You can also go over here and see the implications on the temperature and sea level, and you can see what would occur if there was no policy and what would occur after policy. By the way, we're, we're still testing and, and uh, fixing this up, so there's a few aesthetic problems there, as you saw. Um, we will we'll fix that up um, shortly. But you will be able to, uh, after this webinar, be able to uh, access these simulations as well. Um, and as we fix things and add things to them, they will automatically update on your versions. So that's really a, a, a nice, cool feature. All right, so there's policy choice number one. Let's look at policy choice number two, capping emissions. There's a lot of discussion out there about capping emissions. What would happen if we capped emissions at some level? In this case, let's cap emissions at 2020. Um, I'm not going to go over the prediction. Let's just test that out and see what happens. I want to make sure we get through some other topic areas here. So we're going to cap emissions at 2020. What does that mean? Well, emissions here um, are going to be in red. You're going to see what occurs in this lower right chart as emissions go to 2020 and then flat. So that's what cap means. Well, it's interesting because if it caps at a level, again, that's greater than the removals, what does that mean to the bathtub? The bathtub is still going to continue to rise, although not as badly as it did before. All right, let's look at another policy choice. How about we reduce emissions to 50% of 2010 levels by 2050. That seems to be a pretty aggressive one. So again, um, you would want people to, uh, to make a prediction here. I'm just going to go ahead and run this. What would happen if we reduced to 50% of 2010 levels? So next year's levels, what if, what if we cut to 50% of those levels after that by 2050? We're going to run this simulation. Okay, it's running a little slower now. I think some of this is bandwidth due to uh, many people, and we're running this, this webinar here. Um, it was running faster at home this morning. Um, so you can see, again, that the black line doesn't rise nearly as badly as the previous one. However, it still does not flatten off. The emissions rate here goes up, and then it comes down, and then at, tw at 2050 it flattens. But again, it's still less or it's still greater than the removal, so that's not going to get us there. 
So you can imagine that probably by now we've got a policy, hopefully, that we're about to show since this is the last one for those of you that are good at multiple choice tests. So we're going to test this one out. This one is to reduce to 80% of 1990 levels. So go back about 20 years and then reduce another 80% beyond that, so really 20% of 1990 levels. It turns out that doing so um, will allow emissions to come down to very low levels and to roughly equilibrate eventually to the, um, level, the rate of removals. Uh, this number of 236 is really just close to, uh, to zero. And um, you know it's really kind of hovering here together. So we've reached more of a state of equilibrium at around 400 parts per million. This also required some uh, reduction of deforestation. There are some emissions associated with deforestation, which we also added to that. Um, but that's uh, that's a minor uh, a minor issue relative to just cutting down emissions. So it turns out that there is a policy um, that's on the table. And uh, we'll show in more detail that uh, Europe and the U.S. Um, are, are folks that are uh, actually looking at such a policy. Um, so there's that, that message. And um, you know, the future, what it looks like, um, there's a movie embedded in here. I'm actually going to save this for later in this particular uh, webinar. But there's, a, again, a movie embedded in this embeddable sim that you can use to talk to about the future. Because when you look at um, a future that says that emissions need to come down to 80% less than 1990 levels, folks might be um, worried that uh, that future might be bleak. In fact, there is um, imp implications or actually, um, you know, you can see right now many things occurring in technology that will make that type of a, a situation um, possible. All right, so let me reverse uh, back. So this is the, the first simulation. I'm going to show two embeddable sims today. This is the basic four message one. So let's go back and, and revisit those four messages again. So core concept number one, CO2 in the atmosphere behaves like a bathtub. And the reason the CO2 um, bathtub gets fuller is if the inflow is greater than the outflow. So the sooner the growth in emissions stops, the better. We've already covered that topic. Just as you see here, if you stop growth in emissions in 2025, the red line up here uh, goes up to around 700 or so. If you, um, reduce, or if you cap emissions at 2015, so in other words, you cap them 10 years earlier in this, in this uh, trajectory, you can actually reduce parts per million by almost 100 uh, points. So one of the messages, that, again, that we've got to get across is that every year that we delay, every year that we allow the, uh, the gap between the, again, the emissions relative to the removals, every year that gap widens, the situation gets worse. So we've got to, we've got to start doing things sooner. That's, that's message number two. Um, not only must we cap it, but message number three says that we must make it become less than removals. So we already showed that policy. Currently, we've got to go back um, several years and even a percentage below that, like again, like 1990, in order to make sure that sequestering is greater than emissions or emissions is less than sequestering. All right, message number four. Most current proposals will not be effective, but we're moving in the right direction. So again, as I showed on that uh, policy choice number four screen, if you can reduce to 80% below 1990 levels, you can achieve a stabilization of around um, 400 parts per million. Okay, and this is from Sustainability Institute and Climate Interactive. They've interpreted current proposals, and although um, most co proposals on the table haven't been sufficient um, in terms of their long-term effectiveness, currently um, it looks like Europe and the U.S. are leaning towards proposals that are um, at 80 percent below 1990 levels by 2050. So there is some hope. Um, we've got to figure out a way to get uh, get this message out there and to get uh, more of the uh, more of the uh, the world supporting uh, proposals in this in this area. So that's the next step. So we've got the four messages. The next step is let's get the message out. How are we going to do that? So um, again, getting the message out means building awareness among the general population. How can we facilitate individual and community actions? How do we support policies to reduce emissions? 
if awareness isn't raised among the general population, it's going to be very difficult for policies and legislation to be actually enacted. Um, otherwise, there will be likely to be uh, 